All right. Good afternoon. Uh, as you may have seen earlier today, the Secretary General was in Newark, New Jersey, where he delivered the commencement address for the class of 2022 at Seton Hall University. In his remarks, he told graduates that they were entering a world brimming with peril, with conflicts and division on a scale not seen in decades, and then now falls to them to use what they have learned to do something about it. The Secretary General said he hopes that they will succeed where his generation failed, adding that they must be the generation that succeeds in addressing the planetary emergency of climate change. The Secretary General pointed out that despite mountains of evidence of looming climate catastrophe, we still see mountains of funding for coal and fossil fuels that are killing our planet. But we know, he said, that investing in fossil fuels is a dead end and no amount of greenwashing or spin can change that. Mr. Guterres said that we must put them on notice. Accountability is coming for those who liquidate our future. He gave the graduates a simple message. Don't work for climate wreckers, but use your talents to drive us towards a renewable future. His remarks have been shared with you. Thank you. Also this morning, uh, this, the Paris Peace Forum presented the conversation recorded yesterday with the Secretary General as part of its spring meeting. The discussion moderated by Trish, Trisha Shetty, the president of the Paris Peace Forum Steering Committee, focused on the theme of preserving global cooperation in times of war. Talking about the war in Ukraine, the Secretary General reiterated his appeal to find a solution that would allow for food produced in Ukraine as well as for food and fertilizers made in Russia to be available for the international market. This, he said, would help many developing countries avoid the compounding effects of high food and energy prices. If you missed it this morning, the discussion is now available on demand on UN Web TV. Uh, back here, the Security Council met this morning on Sudan. They heard from the Secretary General's Special Representative, Volker Pertus, on the overall situation. Um, on the situation in Sudan, which says the overall situation has remained precarious, which much at stake, including Sudan's political, social, and economic stability. Those remarks were shared with you, and um, Mr. Purchase will be uh, available to you at the stakeout of the Security Council, uh, probably close to the half-hour mark, so as soon as we're done here. Um, also on Sudan, our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that erratic seasonal rains, floods and pests and diseases and other factors have led to, est uh, have led to estimates for the upcoming harvest being well below average. The price of sorghum, millet and enmillet continues to soar across Sudan, according to the Food and Agricultural Organization. FAO and the World Food Program estimate that the number of people who are at, who are at acutely food insecure across Sudan is expected to increase from 9.8 million last year to 18 million by the September 2022. Our partners reached 3.9 million people in Sudan with food and livelihood assistance between January and March of this year. The Emergency Relief Coordinator, Martin Griffiths, allocated $20 million in April from the Central Emergency Response Fund to support the distribution of seeds and the current planting season. On the funding front, only 13% of the 2022 Humanitarian Response Plan has been funded to date. And our friend Hans Grunberg, the Special Envoy for Yemen, has just finished today a two-day meeting with Yemeni economic experts from diverse backgrounds to consult on the priority for the multi-track peace process. Participants underlined the momentum provided by the truce on the economic issues and identified opportunities for incentivizing further progress. Mr. Grunberg said that addressing the deteriorating Yemeni e uh, economy will be central to both alleviating the chronic suffering of the Yemeni civilians and reaching a sustainable solution to some of the key drivers of this conflict, adding that it is important to identify those areas where our efforts could prove useful and efficient in helping parties find common ground in addressing the issues that affect all Yemenis throughout the country. In Sri Lanka, the UN team led by the resident coordinator, Hannah Singer Hamdi, is addressing urgent needs with food assistance and essential medicine. With $1.5 million donation from the government of Japan, UNICEF will procure medicines for over 1.2 million people, 
among them 53,000 pregnant mothers and nearly 122,000 children with immediate medical needs. WFP will also receive $1.5 million from Japan to provide food assistance to children and families in need of support. In addition, Australia has made available the equivalent of nearly $5 million for food security, essential medicines and women's health, and nutrition data collection and analysis, with several entities working together to address the issues, including the, uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Food Program, the World Health Organization, the UN Population Fund, and the UN Children's Fund. Speaking of the UN Children's Fund, a new report today released by UNICEF says most wealthy countries are creating unhealthy, dangerous, and noxious conditions for children, uh, not just within their borders, but also across the world. The report looks at indicators such as exposure to harmful pollutants, including toxic air, pesticides, damp, and lead, access to light, green spaces, and safe roads, and the country's contributions uh, to climate crisis, consumption of resources, and the dumping of electronic waste. The report states that if everybody in the world consume resources at the rate uh, that people do in the European Union countries and those in the OECD countries, the equivalent of 3.3 Earths will be needed to keep up with consumption levels. The full ranking of countries by overconsumption and their impact on children is available on UNICEF's website. Um, Thursday, as you all know, is UN Peacekeeping Day, uh, and it is being marked here. Um, but ahead of the ceremonies, you can already share with the name. We can already share with you the names of the recipients of the two most prestigious awards. First, the Captain Mbai Dian Medal for Exceptional Courage will be awarded to the late Captain. Uh, Abdel Razak Hamid Bahar of Chad. Captain uh, Abdel Razak was deployed to the Agalok Super Camp in Northeast Mali when it was attacked by armed terrorists in April of last year. He, held a bold he led a bold counterattack to defend the camp, protect the lives of his colleagues, and prevent civilian casualties. But sadly, he was killed during the operation. The medal will be presented to his family during the ceremony here on Thursday. The second award uh, will go to the military observer Major Winnet uh, Zarare uh, from Zimbabwe. She will receive the 2021 UN Military Gender Advocate of the Year Award. Major Zarare recently completed her assignment with the UN mission in South Sudan. While posted in Benchu, she advocated for gender parity and women's participation within her own ranks among local military counterparts and in host communities. More details on two press releases. Uh, I do expect a note uh, to be set, given to me on uh, the Congo, DR Congo soon on peacekeeping note. But in the meantime, just want to thank Senegal for their full payment to the regular budget, which brings us up to oh, Edward wins, 103. Edward, since you're paying attention, um, you get to ask the first question. Wow. Thank you, Steph. Um, so, uh, before I ask questions, I just want to have a follow-up with Edith yesterday's protest. Um, because he, she, she protested in the strongest term about the access limitation of the UNHQ. Have you checked out what, what, what's happening? I don't here? have an update for you yet, but I'm continuing to check. Okay. So, my question, first one. Uh, the WHO uh, chief, Mr. Tindros, has been confirmed for the second term. Uh, any any uh, comments on this from the Secretary General? Well, we congratulate uh, Dr. Tedros and look forward uh, to the very close working relationship that uh, the Secretary General, Dr. Tedros, uh, have enjoyed and will continue uh, to enjoy. So, um, because now more and more countries discovered the confirmed case of monkeypox, does the UN Secretariat consider it a risk or challenge now? Well, we will leave the, the medical... Um, the medical analysis, the medical uh, observations to WHO. Which is why I put these two questions together. Excellent. Uh, and, and, and okay, so the, the next question is concerning um, Turkey and Syria because uh, I think yesterday the Turkish President Erdogan said he will soon have another an operation in North, uh, North Syria to have the 30 kilometers safe zone to link up two separate areas. Uh, do you think that this would uh, 
spark another um, escalation or um, just destabilize the situation on uh, Syria? We, we're not going to comment on uh, on hypotheses, you know, on, on hypotheticals. What it, what I will reaffirm is our position uh, defending the territorial integrity of Syria. It e Thank you, Steph. Um, at the World Economic Forum in Davos today, um, the European Union chief Ur Ursula von der Leyen uh, raised an issue that the Secretary General keeps urging, uh, raising about food security and uh, the scarcity of wheat. Um, is there any update on the Secretary General's um, efforts to um, try and arrange a package which he has talked about? You know the Secretary General's view on this is that for his part he will uh, uh, keep his nose to the grindstone, uh, say as little as possible. Uh, as the efforts uh, continue. Uh, I'll go, Benno, and then we'll go to you, Michelle. Just a really quick follow-up. Sure. Thank you, Benno. <laughs> My authority here is just astounding. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Um, following on from Eddie's question about the Secretary General's yeah. intense contacts, which mm -hmm. he mentioned last week, there's some reports out of London today about Britain being in discussions with allies about a possible coalition of the willing to try and escort freighters carrying Ukrainian grain in sort of safe corridors. Is that part of the Secretary General's discussions or is that something separate? Yeah, there, there are lots of reports, uh, to use a maritime term, floating out there. Uh, we're not going to comment uh, on any of them. Uh, Benno, since you challenged my authority, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, read my note on the DRC, and then I'll come back to you. That's retaliation. Yeah, exactly. That is retaliation. Yeah, that's fine. I'm allowed. Um, the UN mission, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, reports that fighting between Congolese armed forces and the M23 armed group has continued yesterday in the areas of uh, Chanzu and Runyoni, as, as well as close to Bingenga, south of Ruchuru. Uh, peacekeepers provided aerial and artillery fire support as well as aerial surveillance support to the Congolese Armed Forces. Early this morning, the Congolese Armed Forces were attacked again by M23, this time in Ruhunda, which is about 23 kilometers northeast of Goma. The mission said that people have fled their homes as a result of the fighting. Some have sought refuge inside the DRC, while others have reportedly crossed the border into neighboring Uganda. The mission is continuing to engage with political actors at the national, provincial, and local levels, as well as with community leaders and humanitarian actors in Ruchuru to discuss protection of uh, and humanitarian needs. As we mentioned yesterday, the head of the UN mission in DRC has condemned these attacks and called on the M23 to lay down their weapons. Our UN mission remains ready to uh, use all necessary means within its mandate to support Congolese efforts to neutralize armed groups and protect civilians. The mission will continue to engage with Congolese national, provincial, and local authorities and community leaders in support of a political solution. Benno. Um, I bet you have seen the numerous media reports about the uh, mass internment of Chinese Uyghur minority in China. What's your comment on this? Yes, I mean we've we've uh, we've seen the media reports, which are you know are um, uh, which are very concerning uh, indeed. As you know, the High Commissioner for Human Rights is uh, currently uh, in China. Uh, to discuss uh, the situation in Xinjiang. Um, so I will leave it at that. If I may follow up. Um, if I quote the BBC here, after a warning shot is fired, if the student, quote unquote, continues to try to escape, the order is clear, shoot them dead. This is from a manual of a camp that China calls a school from com for combating extremism. Mm -hmm. Do you think that being very concerned is an adequate response? As I said, uh, Miss uh, Bachelet is there. 
uh, to discuss the situation in Xinjiang uh, with, the Chinese, um, with the Chinese authorities. Ms. Salome. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, the United Nations and member states have all called for uh, an independent investigation into the death of my colleague, mm -hmm. Shireen Abu Akleh. Um, now, the Palestinian Authority has officially requested that the ICC investigate her death. I'm wondering, uh, since the ICC has ruled in the past that they have jurisdiction to investigate in the territories, does the Secretary General um, support this? Is, is he satisfied with the pace of the ICC's response to um, in request to investigate there in the past as well? Look, uh, the ICC operates separately uh, from the Secretary. It's not for, for him to give them instructions or to comment on, uh, on, uh, on their action or, or the pace of their action. Uh, what is very important for us is that there be independent accounting of of what happened that uh, in Geneva. would the ICC be considered independent accounting of what happened? Uh, I think the ICC to me the ICC would fall in. I mean, uh, if you're asking me if is the ICC uh, broad in, independent uh, investigation, yes, but I'm not commenting on that particular case. Can I just follow up? Yesterday, uh, an EU delegation was denied entry into Israel to investigate the death as well. There's a history of this. UN officials have been denied access to the Palestinian territories in the past. Does that concern the Secretary General? And, and he, would he call on Israel to allow ICC investigators in as well? Look, I, I'm not going to get ahead of where this is going with the, with the ICC. We've always advocated for the, uh, the, the access of UN uh, experts. I will leave, leave the EU to deal with itself. It to some. Um, just uh, first a follow up on the um, Syria Turkish border issue. Uh, you 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 said uh, that it's a hypothetical uh, thing, but it's actually like Mr. Erdogan, uh, President Erdogan said uh, on the record uh, that uh, or he announced that Turkey will launch a new military operation on the on the Turkish Syrian border to expand Turkish controlled so-called security um, zone up to 30 kilometers. So do you have I mean, a comment? Listen, uh, our reaction is A, we stand for the territorial integrity of Syria. And what Syria needs is not uh, more military uh, operations from any quarter, what Syria needs is a political solution. What Syria needs is more humanitarian assistance, and those are the two things that we're working on. On sorry, on Sudan, uh, I think you were asked yesterday about the uh, um, the fact that um, uh, the Sudanese government did not uh, renew uh, the visa of a senior advisor working on peace building. You didn't uh, have a comment yesterday. Do you have a comment on that? Today, uh, I know that there is a statement from Init Tamas on that, but um, did you get any uh, uh, reason why the visa was sure. not? Sure. I mean, what, what I, the details that I got, thank you for bringing it up, is that uh, the, the reporting uh, was a little, was slightly off. Uh, the individual concern is a senior consulting supporting uh, the integrated uh, office of the resident coordinator, humanitarian coordinator. Uh, for to conduct peace building assessments, but she is not a UN staff member. She's a consultant. While the Sudanese authorities have not denied the visa renewal request for this individual, uh, the individual left Sudan recently due to the delay in the visa renewal. As to the reason why uh, for the delay, we have not received, as far as I know, not received any uh, explica explication. Patrick, and then we'll go to the back. Uh Good afternoon, Stefan. Question, uh, Senate, Sen Senegalese President Macky Saw, he's scheduled to visit uh, Russia and Ukraine on behalf of the African Union sometime soon. Um, what do you think the Secretary General would want him to convey to Russia, given that nearly half of the African nations abstained or did not vote in the uh, resolution for the UN to condemn the Russian invasion? And how can the Sec Secretary General convince the African Union that this is a horrific war and that more of these African nations need to be on board to condemn it? Thank you. Well, I mean, it's far be it from the Secretary General to tell uh, President Macky Sall 
what to say or, or what to do during his diplomatic uh, efforts, nor is it for him uh, to tell countries how to vote uh, in General Assembly. I think what, uh, what the head of the African Union represents is a group of countries that is being uh, severely impacted uh, by the food and energy crisis and the fertilizer crisis that the Secretary General is trying to address. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Mr. Dojari. Uh, my name is Zahra Hojabri, IRNA correspondent. Uh, as you may know... Can you put your, know, your mic the microphone a little closer to you? It's, it's yeah. all just... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as you may know, um, Martyr uh, Sayyad Khodai, uh, an IRGC ranking member, was assassinated uh, on Sunday in front of his home in Tehran. Uh, What's the position of the UN and Secretary General on uh, act of terror? And does the UN condemn such act of terror? Well, I mean, the, the only thing I would say is that we've always stood against uh, extrajudicial uh, killings. Ms. Fasulo. Thank you, Steph. Um, I'd like to ask a question about the Ukrainian-Russian talks that seem to have broken down. I know that the UN is not playing an active mm -hmm. mediating role, but I was wondering if, you know, what kind of context there might be in terms of these actual mediations when they're occurring in terms of um, keeping the UN in the loop or yeah. getting some advice. I mean, the, advice. The, you know, the, the, the Turkish uh, authorities, uh, President Erdogan, the foreign minister, have been in the lead in kind of hosting uh, the discussions between the two sides. It's a process that we fully uh, support, and the Secretary General and others remain in touch with the Turkish authorities who are keeping us abreast of developments. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's anybody on the uh, chat. I shall see you tomorrow. Um, and we should go down to the stakeout. Volker Perth should be out very soon. Thank you.